Today we're taking booze in the kitchen and making falernum. For this recipe, you're going to need a large measuring cup, a small measuring cup, measuring spoons, a cheesecloth, a citrus juicer, a fine mesh strainer, a microplane grater, a funnel, a pan, a pot, a mixing bowl, a cutting board, a knife, a wooden spoon, a bottle, a carafe or a mason jar, and optionally, a kitchen scale. The ingredients are Ray and Nephew White Overproof Rum, limes, cloves, ginger, almonds, sugar, water, and almond extract. Falernum is a traditional recipe that comes from Barbados and dates back at least to the mid-1800s. It appeared in print as early as 1852 in Five Years' Residence in the West Indies by Charles William Day. Falernum is a common ingredient in some seminal tiki cocktails. However, falernum itself has a fairly loose definition. It's usually comprised of a combination of lime, ginger, clove, almond, and sugar, or at least something in that neighborhood. But it's sometimes clear, sometimes cloudy, sometimes boozy, sometimes not. So different falernum brands or recipes could have wildly different results. This one comes from Paul Clark, spirits writer, contributing editor to Imbibe, and owner of the site Cocktail Chronicles. The same site that turned me onto the drink to hell with Spain. This is a recipe he toiled over to get just right. This is the ninth formula he came up with, hence the name Falernum Number no. 9. He worked on it for so long partially because at the time, commercial brands of Falernum were hard to come by. That's changed nowadays, but Clark's recipe is a favorite of tiki historian and tiki evangelist, Beach Bum Barry. Barry liked Clark's recipe so much that he included it in his books and in his app. And I very much concur. It makes for an exciting, wonderfully complex, full-flavored alternative to commercial Falernum. Let's start with the ginger. Peel it, then chop it into little discs. If you want to be more accurate, you can measure it on a kitchen scale. You're shooting for an ounce and a half or 42 and a half grams. Then drop that in your carafe. I'm making this in a carafe, so feel free to add it to a mason jar or something like that. Next, zest your limes. You want to remove as little of the white pith as possible while getting as much of the peel as you can. Then repeat that until you have the zest of nine limes. Save the limes, because you'll need those for later. Add the lime zest to your carafe. Chop some raw, blanched almonds. If you have blanched almond slivers, you can skip this step. Then heat up your pan on medium heat. Measure out two tablespoons, or 130 milliliters of chopped almonds. Add those to the pan. With this measuring spoon, that's two scoops. Toast the almonds lightly. Stir or toss them frequently. And keep in mind they'll be ready really quickly. Then let those cool. Measure out about 40 whole cloves. Add those to the craft. Once the almonds are cool, add those to the craft as well. Then measure out six ounces or 180 milliliters of white overproof rum. Add that to the craft. You're gonna to wanna to let that steep for 24 hours. So pop on the top and wait. In the meantime, you should juice your limes. Because the zest has been removed, you wanna squeeze them sooner rather than later. The longer you wait, the outer skin of the lime will harden into a crust and make it harder to juice. While the limes are still pliable, you want to cut, squeeze, strain, and bottle the juice. Then save four and a half ounces or 130 milliliters of it for the final syrup. Next, make your rich simple syrup. Measure out 14 ounces or 140 milliliters of sugar. Add that to your pot. Measure out seven ounces or 200 milliliters of water. Add that to your pot. Turn it on medium heat and stir frequently until the sugar is dissolved. Clark recommends that you make the syrup without heat. Feel free to make it that way if you like. I opted to make it this way, but whatever method works for you. The next day, spread your cheesecloth over your mixing bowl. Empty your carafe into it, and be sure to squeeze the juice out of the solids with the cheesecloth. You'll be left with a sort of homemade spiced rum base. To that base, you'll want to add 14 ounces or 400 milliliters of rich simple syrup. Pour that in your bowl. Measure out four and a half ounces, or 130 milliliters of lime juice. Pour that in your bowl. With this measuring cup, that's three pours. Measure out a quarter teaspoon, or a little over a milliliter of almond extract. Add that to your bowl. Then give that a quick stir. 
pour your falernum into measuring cups and make it easier to pour in your bottle. You can just combine everything in the measuring cup instead of the bowl if that makes more sense for you. Stick in a funnel and pour the falernum in your bottle using a fine mesh strainer. That'll help pick up any bits of spices or lime zest that may have come through the cheesecloth. Then slap on a homemade label, and like most homemade syrups, you'll want to store this one in the fridge. And there you have it. Homemade Falernum number 9. Enjoy. Click here for more videos. Be sure to subscribe. And check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, check out the description below.